Uh, th thanks, Siobhan, and, and good morning, everybody. This, this afternoon, I'm going to have a look at uh, the whole area of um, the steps that we can take to Im improve soil health, both on, on tillage and grassland farms. And yes, Siobhan is right. Um, we very much focus around soil fertility. But this morning, hopefully, I will give you an insight into looking and assessing um, soil structure and, and thinking about soil health. So if we think about soil health, and look, I've looked at many definitions over the last number of days, but again, soils have many functions. And again, a key function is, is food production, fiber production, and energy production. Also, soils are a massive store of, of nutrients. So again, there's a big, I suppose, a big volume of nutrients in our soils. And I suppose that's what we have been trying to do over the years in terms of improving soil fertility, is to improve the availability of those nutrients. And also, we must remember, this, our soils have a major function in the cycling and the turnover of nutrients as in slurry and organic manures. Also our soils purify and store water and we're trying to build in resilience into our soils in terms of whether it's you know, big rainfall events or drought events in terms of having enough water to supply our crops during the growing season. Soils also, you know, they perform a function in terms of weed and pest management and very importantly, they store a lot of carbon. So again, it's very important that we get an understanding of that carbon and we try to build that carbon going forward. And also, they're a, a massive um, reservoir of uh, soil life and soil biodiversity as well. So again, if we think about soil health, um, I suppose simply, there's, if you think of a stool, there's three legs to a, health, a, you know, a healthy soil. Number one is soil structure. Number two is soil fertility, which we think and talk a lot about. And number three is soil biology, which we probably don't focus enough on. Soil biology has a key role to play in healthy soils. And again, I've brought in those little plumes of organic matter or soil carbon. So that's a natural glue that you know, gives soil structure, gives it function. It's like the cement in, in, the, in the, the walls and the buildings around us here this morning. So that's very, very important to good soil function. So in terms of assessing soil structure, um, my, my research colleagues, both in Johnstown Castle and here at, at Oak Park, have developed methods uh, for assessing soil structure or looking to see is there soil compaction or any damage to those soils. So the first one there is what we, we call the grass vest. And again, we're looking at the top 25 centimetres of soil. We look at things like the root mat, and then we assess the soil for things like the, the, the size and shape of the aggregates, the, the rooting, the colour of those soils. You know, is there, is there um, you know, water um, you know, stagnation on those soils. Um, and also in the arrows there on, on the picture there, we look to see is there maybe a little bit of compaction, whether some poaching or for machinery. On the tillage side, again, we assess the top half meter of soils. We look at the plow layer and also the, the soil below it. So we're looking at the top 25 centimeters. Again, we assess the soil in terms of the quality of that soil, in terms of you know, the shape, the size of the aggregates, how much rooting, things like smell and color. And also then we assess the next uh, 25 centimetres just on the top of the subsoil. And in between, there's a layer there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a zone for examination. You know, on a plough-based system, that's the cultivation layer, the cultivation zone. And there may be compaction there. So it is important when you take out, dig out your soil to look at that layer. And some simple things as rooting, you know, the presence of roots, you know, are the roots going vertically down or are they going horizontally? And again, you know, that's, that will give you a very good indication to see is there a problem with compaction or maybe what remediation is required on that soil. So in terms of, say, managing or maintaining good soil structure or good soil, soil health, um, on grassland soils is very much around trafficability. So again, you know, you know when it comes to the, to, to the, to the application of slurry in springtime, like are soils fit to take that, that equipment? which has now got very, very heavy, or come silage harvest. You know, is soil trafficability good? What's the soil moisture deficits? Do we need to delay the harvest or the spreading of story by a day or two to ensure that we're not damaging the soils? Also, grazing conditions. You know, grazing intensity has, has increased on, on, on intensive livestock farms. So again, it's in the shoulders of the year, early spring and late in the autumn. So again, when we let our animals out to graze, you know what I mean, are soil conditions good? And if you do find that there is, you know, say poaching damage in fields, like a, a good remedial action there is using farmyard manure, targeting, targeting it to the paddock that got poached or maybe the headland got, that got poached. On the tillage side of the house, again, again, it's back to field conditions, soil moisture conditions, um, and again, man, managing heavy field operations, whether it's plowing, sowing, harvesting crops. In terms of remediation, we have, you know, well-proven measures there, like organic manures are, again, a welcomed um, source of you know, carbon, organic matter, and nutrients on tillage soils, and big, big 
bring big benefits in terms of improving soil structure. Also things like cover cropping. Again, that we have a, you know, we have a, a crop in the ground nearly every day of the year. That's the root system there. It gives soil structure and also you're adding valuable carbon to the soils there as well. The other area that we're very familiar with is soil fertility. And I think here it's very, very important in terms of nutrient balance that we soil test, we correct soil pH, you know, we, we, we look at our carbon levels, our organic matter levels, and also we maintain uh, soil fertility levels as well. And again, that's very much back to nutrient deficiency. If you take something simple as, as lime, again, has been discussed here, here this morning, again, it increases soil P avail availability, which is very important in terms of, of rooting and the productivity of our soils. In terms of getting nutrient balance, and balance right, it's very much back to fertilizer planning, having a lime plan, having a plan for organic manures, and then a fertilizer program to, to ensure there's balance in terms of our major nutrients. The final one there is soil biology. So again, it's very, very important. It's the engine, it's the life of our soils. So again, you know, it's a, a very good indication of a healthy soil. And, and in the, a simple indicator there is earthworm numbers. Again, a recent, some recent work that we've done on, on the Better Farms program there, we had three farms. The first two farms there, they, they use very little organic manures, but our third farmer had a long history of using organic manures and the earthworm numbers went from something like 200 per cubic meter up to 500 per, per cubic meter. And even to walk into those fields, you could see the, the castings on the ground, you could see the, the fields were drier, you could also see the, the earthworms where they, where they were burrowing, and again, numbers were very, very large. The biology, again, I can't overemphasize the importance of it in terms of nutrient cycling, nitrogen fixation, pathogen suppression, and also soil drainage and aeration. So in terms of feeding the biology on a, on a grassland farm, we've good access to organic manures, farmyard manure, cattle slurry, targeting those to, to the areas that, you know, maybe there has been some soil compaction. Also things like multi-species swards, you know, king or diversity is king. On the tillage side of the house, we have, we have cover crops, we can also chop straw and organic manures. And that's very much putting a food source, you know, into the soil for the biology to feed on and grow that biology. So in, in summary, Siobhan, I would say it's very, very important that we take the spade out. You know, we do a grass vest or we do a double spade to see what the quality of our soil is. Is there an issue in terms of soil compaction? And then we, you know, we put a, a, a mitigation strategy, whether it's targeting farmyard manure, using slurry efficiently, or on the tillage side, there's many options there from chopping straw to cover cropping. So with that, I, I leave it at that, Siobhan.